What's up you guys? It is the next day. Sorry about the back lip, but we're a little crowded in here. I got my new starter with the probably world's worst box ever. There's a story behind this. I actually got a different one in a different box with packaging that was missing. And this is the picture how it arrived. I lucked out because they had two of them. The one I ordered and then this one came in basically the same time. This one wasn't there at the time I made my order. So I guess they ordered two and sold me one. Well, the one broke and went back to who knows where. And this one came back. Although this one looks like it's old enough to vote. But then again, my truck is old enough to be considered a senior citizen almost. At least for trucks. And I got my new starter, which uh, these things are not light. Ugh. Wonderful box, right? Alrighty, so now this is the new starter. It looked a little dusty when I first ugh. it looked a little dusty when I first got it, but it is brand new or rebuilt. Well, rebuilt would I don't know, if it's brand new, it probably cost a fortune. Either way, we now have it. So now what I have to do is change this. If you take these bolts out and these plugs, you can change the clock position of the snout because depending on what kind of truck it bolts into matters on you know how this is positioned. So what they do is you back these off and you change that clock position. In this particular application, the starter solenoid hangs low. So we have to set it up so it does exactly that and clocks it properly, which it may actually be. Let me go ahead and set it up how I have it on my phone so we can start that. Let me go get the phone. Starter. All right, so this is the picture we're looking at. And that's what we need to make it look like now. Obviously, it's clocked. Obviously, it's clocked 180 out. You see the solenoid to be over here, not there. So what we'll do, we'll rotate the starter motor itself. to mirror what it is in the picture and now I have to do is just get the Torx bits and take those uh, six bolts out of there there's six of them all right so let's go ahead and get that done the phone there. I gotta be careful I'll break my phone I've done that before don't leave it on the hood of your forged truck I've done that before my broken what I've done that before breaking my phone working on crap right um, don't leave it on the fender well of a Ford truck and then close it. Um, I, uh, my son got a new phone that way. Uh, not Matt, Sean. Anyway, there's your basic instructions. And then this is a warranty core return tag. Oh. Whatever, they're all like crap. Out. It's all garbage for me. First we do is dig these caps out. They're just rubber balls effectively just dig them out all they do is uncover holes that are machined into this nose cone I'll put them there so I don't lose them there we go these are T40s. This is a little twisted. I kind of used it as it wobbles around. When they break loose, you know it. Just back these all the way out. I probably could use the impact on these, but when I sink them down, I don't want to overdo it and break them. Cone is now loose, so what I'm going to do, carefully, is set it 
I'm going to try to rotate it. There we go. Rotate it around. Not remove it, just rotate it. And it obviously doesn't want to roll easy. So it matches the holes. If I zoom in close, and there you'll see where the old ones were. Bolt here. You see it? Bolt here, empty, bolt there. And that's how it went. So now, just gotta look down in there, determine how to make that happen. Oops, a little too far. Back the other. Click right like there. Take our bolt, thread it in. There we go. Come on. Two. Be interesting to know if this starter will also fit in my Detroit so it's kind of got that universal cone angle but it is a caterpillar or well, a starter that goes on a caterpillar Now we replace these plugs. In the open holes. Last one. And in it goes. Done. Now we just got to put it in. That's the hard part, is lifting this thing. You know, this starter is a lot heavier than most people think it is. And the hard part is getting it up off the ground. Somebody makes a starter that I used to put in my E-model that was a lot lighter. It was like a little Japanese thing. I swear it would try to spin the flywheel right off the crank. It would crank it so fast. And it weighed half as much as this. But I don't know how to get a hold of the guy that knew the model number. And I don't know if that starter would fit in this truck. On these old antiques. I ought to weigh one of these. If anybody that's ever done this work certainly knows how heavy they can be. Once you get it in, it seems to hold itself. I want to get a bolt in to secure it better. I coated the threads with never sees. So I guess call it anti sees. It doesn't really matter. Why don't you call it, I guess. I think I got them lined reasonable. Back with the three quarter drive, sorry, half drive, reduced down to three eighths.
There we go. It would be helpful if I had a 5 8 12 point socket in 3 8 drive. That would be helpful because the socket binds into the motor itself until it gets in almost all the way. Once you tighten it up, it goes in much nicer. Doesn't sit at that funky angle. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Ordinarily, I don't tighten them down before I put the top one on, but in this case, the top one will easily thread in just nice. So I don't have to worry about your typical rule of thumb. Don't tighten nothing until after it's secured with, you know. Normally, I don't do that, meaning I don't tighten everything up until after I got them all finger loose, like ready to go. But in this case, I make an exception because once the starter's in a proper position, I mean, you thread them in by the finger all the way in until they're snug at the bottom. So the solenoid ground strap, battery ground strap, battery, two different ground straps right here. I put them backwards. This one is your signal wire. That's your signal.
I gotta get my little ratchet. It's killing my hands. Excellent. I just want one zip tie on that one wire. I really don't know what this wire goes to, but it never was hooked up to anything since I've had it. I'm going to have to figure that out, but since it functions without it, it'll continue to function without it. Oh, I know what that is. That's the, I remember, that's the oil temperature sender for the engine oil temp. Right, I forgot. Next, take my finger down in the hole, thread this in. May have bit myself what I said earlier about tightening the mother bolts. Have to hold it in. There we go.
All righty, good to go. I'll just clean up some tools. Oh, <laughs> I gotta put the battery back on. All righty, boys and girls. So now, now I hook up the batteries. I took the negatives only off, so now I put them on. done and now for this side excellent Really needed to get that jump remote, but that'll be another job for another day. Done. Now admittingly, I'm working on two things at once. I have the rear wheel seal taken apart and getting ready to film installing that next. I'm not gonna fire up the truck, but I am gonna turn it on, push the button to make sure it'll crank. I do not expect it to start. Ordinarily, I would do a start and all that crap, but you know what? This is an actual business, so I'm not gonna fire it up just to idle it up and smoke me out of here. It's cold outside, I wanna keep the door closed. Turns on and it does crank. And it tried starting. Sweet! All right, we know that's solved. All right guys, hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys got a little bit of the experience with the shop. I know I'm a little messed up with the height, but whatever, it is what it is. All right guys, give a like, share this video. I'm out of here, I got more work to do. Excellent.